This is Shout Podcast, the official health and well-being podcast from the Firefighters Charity. Hi, this is Kim. Welcome to episode two of season two of the Shout Podcast. In this brand new series, we're focusing on health and well-being. In each episode, we'll take a close look at a specific topic or issue and speak to experts as well as hear from beneficiaries. So in this particular episode, we'll be hearing from Stuart Rye, former firefighter, about the link he's found between his physical health and his mental health. But first, I spoke with the charity's physiotherapist, Laura Connolly, and senior exercise therapist, Kelly Brown, who first explained to me what we mean about being physically active. Being physically active um, is definitely a start and there's quite a stark difference between physical activity and exercise and quite often people um, tend to get confused between the two. Um, Physical activity, um, the World Health Organization actually defined it as any physical movement, so that includes activities of daily living so that could include carrying your shopping bags it could include dog walking and um, gardening mowing the lawn for example whereas exercise is planned and structured and it's designed to improve improve your fitness um, but yeah d- definitely being physically active definitely helps um, improve our, our well-being and you touched on a couple of little things there kelly that we can do to be physically active so how do we kind of get ourselves into a mindset of finding something that we like um yeah we definitely should try and find something that we like and and the government's recommendations at the moment are um to have either 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity Um, exercise and and that's looking at cardiovascular exercise so that could be walking it could be cycling um, it could be swimming um, anything along those lines and quite often people get a little bit bogged down by the figures and think 150 minutes is is really daunting Um, but you could break that down into five lots of 30 minutes and you should really try and think of the difference between moderate intensity exercise and and vigorous intensity so with moderate you could be able to have a conversation Um, so if you were able to go for a walk with a friend you'll be able to chat to each other and you should be able to hold that conversation quite easily um, with vigorous exercise um, you, you may find it a lot harder to maintain that conversation if you were to speak to someone it may just be the, those one word answers Laura what are your thoughts around pacing how we go about this we found a physical activity that we like to do but uh, you know how do we get started and how do we motivate ourselves to keep going Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I think, um, as Kelly said, finding something you enjoy is really important. Um, And actually, it's useful to sort of assess where you are to begin with. So I think often um, we can have sort of um, ideas of what our ideal might be. um, And we might kind of fall into the trap of trying to compare ourselves with other people. So we might see what other people are able to do and want to be like them. um, But that's not realistic um, for ourselves necessarily. So starting by evaluating where you are and what your current activity level is. Um, is a good place. Um, And then being realistic about um, how much you um, change that. So um, even just an improvement of 1% um, a week, for example, over a long period of time can make sort of life life changing difference and lifelong differences. And that's a little bit around um, kind of habit forming, forming good habits. Um, And pacing comes into that. So um being if you're realistic with the goals that you set um if for example you wanted to be able to walk around the block in your village and that's a three mile loop but at the moment you can only kind of manage under a mile um the the three mile loop might be something that you want to achieve in two months time um and actually breaking that down into smaller chunks until you can you know sort of achieve your final goal is a good place to start if you set realistic goals and you pace yourself well then you're more likely to set yourself up to succeed and also you know not being too hard on yourself um, if you do have a bad day or if you fail to reach the goal for that day we all have those days it's about the positive mindset in not being sort of crushed by that but actually picking yourself up and thinking okay I, I didn't achieve what I wanted to that day but um, tomorrow 
the day after, the week after that, I'll get back on track. So it's being kind to yourself as well, I think. So yeah, so we're also recommended to do um, strengthening activities at least twice a week. And the reason behind this is not just to improve our muscular strength, um, but also to improve our bone density. Um, and as we age, our bone density, it gradually um, decreases. Um, so if we're if active, if we're doing impact activities, that really helps just promote our bone strength and it decreases the risk of conditions such as osteoporosis or osteopenia. We sometimes hear the term sedentary behaviour um, and that's actually defined as um, sitting for periods um, longer than four hours in a day. Now, um, in sort of a, a world that's quite dominated by television and laptops and tablets and phones, um, it's quite easy to spend four hours a day or more sitting um, and so trying to sort of break down the the habits of sitting for for that long um, can be a really positive thing um, and and it can lead to you know becoming stiff and sore in our joints um, that that can in turn lead to um, weakness and we're just not f as physically prepared to um, sort of deal with what life throws at us um, if we've become kind of um, yeah, sedentary, if you like. Um, and, you know, there are there are common barriers to um, changing that behaviour, uh, which can be, oh, I'm just too tired, or um, I'm in pain, um, or the weather's bad, or I just like watching television. Um, but actually, even if you just get up um, and do five minutes of standing or five minutes of activity within that time, you have broken down that four hours of, of sedentary being. Um, and that can be a start to, to helping improve your physical activity levels. You're listening to Shout Podcast from the Firefighters Charity. So someone who has decided to help both his physical and mental health is Stuart Rye. Stuart was a firefighter for 30 years. In 1993, when he was with London Fire Brigade, he was involved in a very harrowing incident that resulted in physical injuries and affected his mental health. Now based in the north of England, in an effort to help his own mental well-being, Stuart took up cycling and last year he undertook a mammoth task of riding to all four compass points in the UK to also help fundraise for the charity. I asked him how that challenge came about. I had it sort of planned probably three, three and a half years ago, really. But one, one thing or another, it didn't transpire. I was going to do it last year, but obviously with lockdown, I couldn't do it because I was going to do it May, June time. And then cut a long story short, I thought, right, OK, I'm going to do it in uh, September, October time this year. Anyway, over the years in my, in my career, I'd, I'd done quite a lot of um, car washes to raise money for the Firefighters Charity, um, which... which um, had, had raised quite a bit, you know, per station, per watch, up and down the country. And I thought to myself, you know, is there anything that I can do to sort of like give back? And I thought, well, you know, I, I haven't got a, I haven't got a charity yet. I'm, I'm raising money for with the um, from a bike ride. So, I got in contact with um, a local rep, a guy called Alan Nell, and um, he put me in in contact with all the people I needed to, uh, gave me all the advice and everything. So I, I, I got the ball rolling. And uh, and sort of from then on, just never looked back, concentrating on a date. I got all my accommodation sorted out and I was heavily training, doing loads of rides and getting longer and longer rides and uh, sort of uh, counting down to the, the big day when I started. And how uh, was it as a challenge? Yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it, 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 it was a tough one, you know, it, it was, it was very tough. I, I wasn't blessed with the weather. Um, I was blessed with the scenery because, uh, especially up in Scotland, it was uh, pretty spectacular, really. And there were some days um, where they were very, very dark, <laughs> with, with, uh, with regarding how I was feeling. Mm. Um, but I knew that if I put my mind to it and just uh, concentrated on l little segments of the ride rather than thinking about the end uh, destination, then I, I, I knew I'd be able to get through it. Mm. Um, I questioned myself at times. I was thinking there was a couple of mornings when I woke up, uh, just, just, just go back to bed, just have, have a day off. But I thought, well, I can't because I've got all my accommodation booked up for that night, so I can't change it all. Um, I've just, I've just got to keep going. 
and you know I, I did that I got it I got it all finished and um, it, it seemed at the time I'd never finish it but you know they would say there were some very very long days and uh, not, not getting back to the accommodation until it was it was dark which which is tough cycling in the dark is very tough I must admit especially when you're exhausted but um, I, I got it done it sounds like this was almost a journey of two parts. It was a journey for your physical health, but the mental health aspect that came into it as well. Did that surprise you about how you felt while you were going along and how you managed to push through? When I, when I am out cycling, um, with the mental health aspects of, of why I do cycling, I'm, 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 I'm just pretty much at peace. I, I'm at peace with, peace with my thoughts. I, I can think logically when I'm on my bike because I don't have any distractions. Uh, the time the time can go when when you are cycling, when you are alone, uh, at thoughts with yourself. I, I, I felt after going out for, for a, a bike ride, however long it was, I came back rejuvenated and it, it, it just I just felt so much better from uh, from get, getting out and uh, and uh, getting energized again. It was great. And it wasn't actually until after retirement that really you discovered the Firefighters Charity and then used the services, right? I, I retired in June 2020 and I'd used the, uh, the Firefighters um, Charity uh, base up in Penrith in, in the January of that year. So I had used the services, but that's the first time in, 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 in my 30 years that I'd ever used them. I, I'd known about them, yeah. but I, I, I just, in all fairness, I just never thought I was, I was worthy of it. And it was, it, it. I suppose never even thought, never even gave it any thought about using the services that they had. I mean, I've known a lot of people that have gone there, and but that was mainly for for physical yeah. um, uh, injuries that they had. Um, I hadn't actually known about anyone who had gone there with um, with mental health issues. But I, I, I never thought that, you know, I, I never thought I'd worthy uh, of going. You know, just thought it was I, I, not not discounted, but. There was always going to be someone worse off than me, uh, and that's and that's how I'd I'd always I'd always viewed it really. Well, I'm so glad that you got over that and and that you did you know make use of the charity services. And then how thankful are we for your fundraising efforts as well? Just over three thousand eight hundred pounds was raised by your four compass points challenge. I mean that's unbelievable. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. Um, I, I never thought I'd get anywhere near that. I think I think I set my my uh, target at about two thousand. Um, and it just it just kept increasing. The support has been fantastic. Stuart, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. No problem. You know, hopefully you can continue on this journey with both your physical and mental health. The two combining together definitely seem to be helping you these days. Yes. No, you are right. You are right. I'm, I'm looking at the weather now, thinking I might even get out this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Shout Podcast from the Firefighters Charity. That was Stuart, and he, I think we can all agree, is a real motivation. Laura and Kelly, do you think it's a good idea to get something in your mind you want to head towards achieving? Yes, I think it depends on sort of what motivates you. So for Stuart... um, the motivation of raising money for the firefighters charity um, and and even just those compass points, you know, albeit pretty extreme, north, south, east and west of the UK. Um, he said in the, you know, in his darkest moments when he thought, what am I doing? This is killing me. Um, actually, the motivation for achieving that goal of the points of the compass and the additional sort of um, boost of raising money for the charity um, was was great motivation for him. So it depends what motivates you as to sort of the goals you set. Um, some people might be driven by numbers. Some people might be driven by their physique and how they look um, and the, the benefit that exercise can bring, um, you know, with your um, sort of your your body shape or whatever. Um, some people might be motivated by something that they can do that would benefit the community. So it might be going out and picking up plastic from the beach. It might be joining an organised litter pick. It might be planting spring bulbs in the village or, or you know, down at your local fire station, whatever it might be. Um, something that um, motivates you and gives you... Um, 
a, a different sense of achievement or a different focus and the physical side of things is sort of a happy consequence you know as part of that and one of the things that Stuart mentioned was the difference that doing his cycling, whether it's a, just a short one heading out for a couple of miles a day or these massive challenges, was the difference it's made to his mental health. Kelly, what connections are there to how we can feel better in ourselves mentally as well as physically? So yeah, being physically active, it has has numerous benefits, not just on your physical health, but as you say, on your mental well-being as well. Um, and when we're active, um, feel-good hormones are released, and these tend to come under an umbrella term called endorphins. I'm sure we've all heard of them before, um, and there's endorphins such as serotonin, um, dopamine, and these are the, what gives us that, that runner's high, or in Stuart's case, that cycler's high, um, and they help reduce our perception of pain and give us that, that feel-good factor from exercising um, but also from a mental well-being point of view there's that sense of achievement and that sense that sense of fulfillment as well as being able to achieve those goals um, and for Stuart reaching that north south east and westerly points of the UK um, it will definitely give him those those sense of um, well-being um, and, and fulfillment as well um, there's also the cortisol response that we need to think about as well so when we exercise we put um, a small amount of physical stress on our body and our body adapts to being able to deal with that stress from the exercise um, and then in turn we can become more resilient um, so this crosses over to emotional stresses and allows our body to cope better for dealing with those those two If you want to find out more about the issues we've discussed today, then visit firefighterscharity.org.uk forward slash shout podcast for lots of links to articles and information. Stuart bravely shared his full story with me when we spoke about the challenge, including telling me about the incident early in his career that affected his mental health. To hear that story in full, just check out the show notes of this episode. And you can make sure you don't miss any of the main podcast or Shout Podcast Plus episodes by subscribing via your usual platform. So what's coming up next time then? We'll be looking at the physical and mental benefits of being outdoors. We speak to nursing services lead Kath Savage, one of our beneficiaries whose experience these benefits firsthand, and Simon Jakeman, a green champion from London Fire Brigade, about the importance of green spaces. Until then, take care. Shout Podcast. Please subscribe and review us wherever you get your podcasts and check out firefighterscharity.org.uk to find out how the Firefighters Charity could support you.